So vlog seven is now the posts that we're putting in. As you can see behind me, I started putting them in. Let me turn around and give you a little more detail. The way we're doing the posts is they'll be mounted on the outside, like this one, with a 45 degree cut underneath. So I'm using three, no, four, four lag bolts. So you see three right here. These are what they call flush mounted lag bolts. And then I got one tucked up underneath there. <clears throat> These posts will be mounted on the outside. And then the same thing over there. So right in this corner, we'll have a double post. Kind of like what I did here on this corner which is a double post. The reason why is when I have my railing coming from here going up, it's at a different height and a different angle because my stairs, technically the, the support for my stairs is not flush to the outside of my rim joist. It's actually in a few inches, uh, as you can see right here from the gap. So my steps were installed to be flush with this outside line here, but not the support. So I had to do a little finagling, get this to work. Give you a top view so you can kind of tell how it's done. So I got three in here three in here and then one here and one there to tie this thing in together so it stays <clears throat> level I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with that corner maybe I will maybe I won't I haven't decided so I got to do my next post in there the reason I did not put the post on the outside or up here is because we're having a hang a little overhang with the railing itself probably about six to eight inches of overhang so i don't need i don't want the post right at that end of that overhang um that's just fanatics i guess is the word i want so then we're going to run the posts up here we were going to incorporate the support beam into it um and we probably still will because it is flush mounted so we'll have to think about that as i get to it but yeah i'm just kind of doing it doing it on the fly in a sense i don't have a real plan i just try to look for something so it comes out symmetrical but yet very supportive and within code so we're gonna put this in the time lapse and uh, continue on I want to show what I'm using for the lag bolts and then you can see how it's a flat head so when they're driven in it it's flush oops there we go it becomes flush to the board so and they have a good good thread on it nice nice thick thread on them um, that's what I want, so it grabs. So, these I bought at, um, where did I get these? These are at Home Depot. Lowe's carries a different brand. But these are Home Depot. I've used these quite a bit, and I've been very happy with them.
Okay, my center point between the post and this where the post is going to go here is right over this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the post, we're going to take my mallet and hammer the bottom of the post so I get marks put into the post showing where these bolts are. So when I drive my lag bolts in, lag bolts in, I will not hit these at all. So the post will cover, I think two of them at least, maybe three, but you won't see those once the post is in, it'll be like this. So by hammering the mallet, the, the uh, post against these screws, it shows me exactly where they're located. So when I put in my lag bolts to hold this post in place, I need to gouge out where the heads of this will go into here. So by doing that, I'm just using a countersink. That's it. And gouge that out. And then I'm going to pre-drill my um, pilot holes here so I know where to go so I don't hit those. And that's it. It works. So let me finish getting this set up. There we go. Flush against the rim joist, which is what we wanted. <clears throat> so the next one I'll install here, but I will do that afterwards because I have to repair this corner of the house, the siding, which you can see. I have to build a corner to uh, enclose that, which will be interesting. So for today, the last one in the time last will be this one here. It's, uh, it's around 89 right now and the humidity is like 80. They're forecasting some heavy thunder showers today. Humidity just like, they'll just blossom above us. So I want to get this done this morning before the rain came in so let me put this in time last time lapse and continue on on that corner post So here's a little thing I had to do is I have a post that has to be installed on the outside of this supporting post. That way it runs parallel to my other two posts. But before I had to do that, <clears throat> I had to fabricate or build a corner here. So what I did is at Lowe's you can buy this channel comes in two different shapes is one it looks like this I'm gonna get my hand to show it and then one it goes like that so this is the channel part and then the and they call it J channel because this here I wanted the J channel so the J part will go in behind the siding but then this part here the siding slides into and it supports the siding 
and holds it in place. The wood is plastic wood and these are what they call um, trimmed screws. T-R-I-M-M-E-D, trimmed screws. And the kit comes with a special bit so it countersinks it, as you can see. And then it has these little white plugs, which I go to this side. Here's the white plug pushed in. And you just sand it down. So all I had to do is cut the siding to make sure that was straight. And then, then I had to rip the length of this plastic wood, which is paintable, <clears throat> to the proper width to match this side. And then this side here, as we look down, I did not have to do the, the J channel. We just went straight over it and then lined it up. So I had to finish off this corner because it was an open corner. When the house was originally sided, they went around this post and it kind of messed things up. So I had to cut it all back. So next, we're gonna add our post in which will cover this corner in. Side note, since over here, the pole is off, it's not against the support. We're going to do the same thing here. We're gonna do it not on the support, which was the original pan, but do it right here. So the supports or the poles all the way around the deck is symmetrical. All right, post installations. We got all our posts in. All the way around, including the tricky corner. Now we're setting the brackets up. I just finished doing the uh, railing. Now we're setting these brackets up, which will take these, zoom out. Very straightforward design. And we already got a spacer, so we're cutting a whole bunch of those. So for the posts, what I use, <clears throat> these were lag bolts. And you can see there's one underneath. So there are four on every single one throughout here, except for the corner ones. So this corner one has three, three, and then up here, which you can't see, now you can, there is a bracket underneath. So we're tying this whole pole into one pole. That has four, this has four, this has four, you see three on this side, but then we come to the front step. And there's our fourth one. And you keep it identical. Three, there's your four. This one here, they overlapped just because we had to offset the stairs to the right um, in order for our brackets to hold the steps in place. So by, but my stairs are parallel to my deck, if you were able to see that measurement. But these kind of overlapped. So what I have is they're tied here and one up high. They're tied into each other. Then I cut the top at a 45 <clears throat> so we don't have a block of wood just sticking out. And our railing. Our railings are all countersinked. I'll show you what I mean. This is a countersink tool. So what it does is it drills a hole, then it creates a countersunk hole. The reason I did that on the railing and not on the floors, when you do it on the floors, 
the screw kind of countersinks itself in there and then you kind of get like a cover material over so it covers the screws <clears throat> which is fine but up here when you do that and you rub your hand across it that material from the floor it was done up here like that it gives you slivers so by countersinking it we're getting rid of that extra material so we'll sand this and then it'll come out smooth and we don't have any extra material sticking up so the railings are all countersunk we got four into the post and then depending on the length of the support we got screws going into the support from the top the bottom is only supported here and here and what I did there I think they call them pocket pocket holes so it's two screws per side on a pocket holes you see there on the top as well and so the tool I use for that is this so depending on how many pocket holes you need or where you need in relation to the width of the board uh, also how far out the pocket holes have to be from the end of the board and you just squeeze this you grab a board squeeze the tool I have this set for a certain length so my pocket hole goes in a certain distance and I'm using a specific screw length but there's my hole right there all lined up dead center and the drill if you look here closely that pertains to this regards to what depth I'm using so we did pocket holes all the way around including the railings but these we did a little differently because of access so you can see one here and one on the top because there's no way to come in from underneath the bottom same for the other side so that is my uh, railings, my poles. I think next we are going to work on the spindles. Yep, those. So we're gonna start on that side. So I gotta go get my uh, compressor and set that up and uh, get that going. But I'll just do a slow little view of what has been done so far. bolts I use were all uh, the through bolts I use were all flathead ones like I showed before it just gives it a much cleaner look to the deck so everything was intentional it wasn't last minute or last second thing and there's actually two ways to install these supports I could have notched the pull out so I would be using a singular board, a singular, a single board from one end all the way to the other. So you'd have to notch this post, this post, and this post. Because I wanted them to be flush right through here. Um, or the pocket holes like I did. So there are two ways of doing it. I chose this way, a little easier. And that's where we're at.
Okay, we are done with the railings and the spindles throughout the deck. So the deck is complete for the most part. Give you a little look for those who are wondering, ideas, so forth. The only thing I'm gonna work on when I get back is I'm gonna do a single spindle right here. So I'm gonna take a piece of the railing here. We're gonna go across with it and set it up just like we did here. But we're just gonna do a single spindle right there to close that gap up. But other than that, my project is completed. This completes vlog seven. The only thing I have left to do for them is some electrical wiring. Putting a light up here and a light over there. The switch will be by the door. And I think that's it. So any questions or comments, rifle them down below. Give me a thumbs up, please. And don't forget to subscribe. Reason I didn't do this as a how-to video is because there's a whole slew of them out there for how to build a deck. So I more likely put this up, or mostly put this up as, here's an idea, here's some deck ideas on how to do it. Uh, total budget for this, for all material, came out to uh, just under 6,000, um, which is reasonably good for what was done here, for amount of work. So, all right, take care, have a good one.